At the time, the casting for the main hero guy was sort of a risk because people only really knew him from his role on the TV series. Overall, he was a good fit for the film though. In the beginning, the main dude's sleeping in bed and he's woken up by a category three. It's an earthquake. Not even a four pointer. He gets deployed because the world is being invaded by aliens, and it's some pretty scary stuff. The aliens have superior weapons where they could spit blue stuff out and destroy buildings within seconds, so it's pretty tough to fight fire with fire. When the hero boy arrives at the base, him and his best friend got this maverick and goose thing going on, but you're just not really sure which is which. But then this happens, and it's pretty obvious that he was goose. The hero's vehicle gets destroyed, but the main guy still knocks out the alien in classic welcome to earth fashion. Since most of the pilots are killed in the early stages of the alien versus humanity, war, the military has to dig from the bottom of the barrel and hires regular blue collar workers to save the world. They go to a top secret military base where they store dead aliens for research purposes. The scientist there starts talking about how fascinating he thinks the aliens are, but then Buzz Killington disagrees and tells him it's not cool. Not when people die. That day, the scientist is dissecting one of the aliens and does a neural handshake with it. Believe it or not, it's actually good news since the gate swings both ways and one of the guys is able to read the alien's mind to find out exactly why they're invading our planet. They're moving from planet to planet. After they've consumed every natural resource, they move on. They're colonists. They overtake worlds. They just they just consume them and then they move on to the next. Everybody's worried and think the Earth is going to die and America's going to be the first one to get the axe. So now the smart scientist guy comes up with a plan to infiltrate the alien headquarters and detonate a nuke that will take out their command center. I'll admit, the plan sounds dumb as I don't know what, but the scientist guy has this whole Clark Kent glasses and Superman bang thing going for him, and you can't help but believe he stands for truth and justice, so everybody agrees to do his plan. First, the one guy who's never driven the vehicle the engineers were repairing, Will Smiths it up and says, I've seen these things in action, and I'm well aware of their maneuvering capabilities. With your permission, General, I'd like the opportunity to try. Then everybody starts saying goodbye to their loved ones, and it feels like somebody's not going to make it back alive. One guy says goodbye to his dad, and it's pretty sad, and the other guy says goodbye to the stepdaddy, and it's just as sad. After that, the two heroes fly to outer space, and you're like, Back on Earth, we get a top 12 motivational speech from the leader, and it's right up there with the Rocky IV, if I could change, you could change, everybody could change speech. Everybody cheers, and all the military people from the seven continents put their differences aside for the greater good. Even the dude who made the speech suits up and joins his troops in battle, so all hands on deck pretty much. Later on, when the two guys get to the alien headquarters, you see a bunch of the aliens posted up, so it's cool that we sneak up on them with the element of surprise. And back on Earth, they're in a literal fight for their lives. One of the guys radios a message to his family member, and the music at that part makes it obvious he's about to suicide himself. After the pilot or pilot sacrifice themselves, it blows up the aliens. Then back at the alien headquarters, the good guys detonate their bomb too and the timer on it is less than a minute, but that leaves more than enough time for them to escape. After three, two, one, kapoosh! Blue light fills up the screen and you can't really tell if the hero made it out okay. Even the military people think he's dead because they're not getting a signal on their monitors. But it's an emergency rescue out there anyway to be on the safe side and he's alive and well. Those are 24 reasons these movies are the same. You agree? Yes, no, maybe so? If not, politely share your thoughts in the comment section below and click the subscribe button for more 24 reason videos. <laughs>